gonna go full hole here, we'll see. Hey everybody, we are not climbing a tree today because it works just a little slow and it's kind of icky outside, kind of cold and wet. So I want to take this opportunity to do a little bit of experimenting and just see what's what about a theory I have. I'm not even sure if it's a theory, but it's just a point of controversy that's come up between me and different people in the comments. I wouldn't even say controversy, that's probably not the right word, but just people with opposing ideas. That's all, I guess that's the thing to say. So. What it is, is it's been prompted to me a couple times to use the Alpine Butterfly in rigging scenarios. And a long time ago, like when I was first getting started, I used the Alpine Butterfly for something. I loaded it super, super tight and I struggled to get it untied. It was, it was a pain. It was definitely not something I want to do again. And so ever since then, I've been afraid to use it and I've just uh, come to using the Bolin on a bike. And that has worked out pretty good for me, but it's kind of a pain because it's got like two loops in it. And so sometimes it's hard to fit into some hardware and stuff. So today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie each one of those knots in an old piece of half inch rope I have laying around. And we're gonna go out and we're gonna tug on them with the mini excavator back in the lot there. We're gonna pull between the dump truck and the excavator, tighten those knots up real, real tight. And we'll see which one unties easier, I guess. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate goal. So let me tie those real quick and we'll go out there and tug on them. So there are a number of ways to tie the Alpine Butterfly. This has become the habitual method for me. You make three wraps on the hand, pull the middle wrap out from under the other two, wrap it all the way around, pull it out and kind of dress things beyond that. So there you go, you ended up with a fairly symmetrical knot that you can load in any of the three directions, by the loop or by either side, it doesn't matter, you can load it this way this way or this way. Has a lot of uses, great knot, very handy, doesn't require any ends, etc., etc. It cannot be tied in the middle of the rope around something. You have to have hardware to go through the center here. If you're at the end of the rope, obviously it can be tied with the end of the rope and be tied around something, but I think there's some other knots I would choose before this knot for something like that. Come down the rope a little farther here and we're gonna tie our bone on a bite. If you're not familiar with this, it's super simple but can be kind of tricky if you don't watch closely. So you go ahead and make your loop, take your bike, put it up through, and then while maintaining this loop, go ahead and run the end of the bite all the way around the knot. Kind of rotate the rope so that they sit nice and everything like that. And you can dress that up like so. Now this knot, I believe, can only be loaded like this and like this. I don't think it's okay to load it like this. I don't know, I'm not a knots expert, but my experience has showed me that this is not a good idea. So what we're gonna go do is we're gonna go hook these two knots up, and we're just gonna pull on so they get the exact same amount of pull, and then we'll come back in here and try to untie them. All right, we're gonna put the bowline on a bite on this end. Latch that in there so it can't slip off. Should be dressed nicely and ready to accept a load. Leave the rest of this rope on the ground. I'll bring the excavator over and we'll hook this butterfly knot up. Alrighty, I think we're ready. Now this excavator produces about 4,800 pounds of pull with a stick. That's a real approximate number. I don't know where that's measured or how it's measured, but it is potentially enough to break the rope. So I'm not sure I'm gonna go full pull here. We'll see. Oh, I saw some creaking and some dust floating out of the rope. So let's give these knots a look-see. Everything's still intact, which is good. This butterfly knot cinched up pretty good, so I think that'll be good enough to give us a good indicator. This is cinched up pretty good too, so I'd rather just stop now and not break the rope and have to start all over. So let's take these knots inside back where it's warm and I can look at them real good and see how easy they are to untie. Alrighty, here is our bowling on a bite. It looks like it fared pretty well. We pulled on this leg of rope and as you can see, I think that's connected to this wrap right here, which is the first wrap in the knot. And it loaded it way harder than this one, which makes sense, because this was just, this side was just laying on the ground. So the best way to untie a bowline, as probably everybody knows, is you just grab it by the back here, you 
pull that forward, which that was definitely a little bit tough. I'm not gonna say it was the easiest thing. And then you can feed the rope through here and she loosens up just like that. And looky there, <laughs> that was kind of hard on that rope right there, which is why we use an old piece. We won't be using this for tree work anymore. And uh, a little bit of work kind of gets it back to shape, but that probably compromised some things. So anyhow, you go ahead and rotate that bite back around the whole knot itself, feed it through just like so. That got kind of messy, but you get the gist, untied. So that was reasonable. Let's move on to the butterfly knot. Now looking at this thing here, I think it's apparent that we loaded this side. Uh, this side was laying on the ground and it looks like that side of the knot is a little bit tighter. Um, I don't know of any particular strategy to untie in the butterfly. If there is one, by all means, let me know about it in the comments. But what I typically do is just start trying to work the loosest side, which in this case is this side. Ugh. Try to loose it, work it loose first. In this case, it's gonna be trying to work loose anything that I can get loose. Holy cow. I don't claim to be the strongest man, but I've been doing tree work long enough. I shouldn't be weak anymore. Ah, let me get a screwdriver. I would definitely never recommend using any metal tools to untie any knots and any rope that you hope to continue using, but we're not gonna continue using this one and I am definitely not getting it by hand. So got some welding gloves on here in case I naturally slip and stab myself. Let's see if we can get this thing pried apart. Ugh. My goodness. After what seems like forever, I got this much worked out with the screwdriver, just kind of prying it on both sides and getting up what I could get up. I'm gonna put this in the vise now and see if I can pull on things, I guess, and see if that <laughs> does any more for me. It's worth noting that I'm having to resort to using the end here. There is no other way I'm gonna even have a prayer getting this thing untied, I don't think. Hmm, even squeezing the rope, I can feel it loosening things up a little bit, which seems counterintuitive. I assume it's loosening things. I can feel the rope creaking in my hands. Maybe it's tightening them, I don't know. Definitely doing some serious damage to things there. Aha, there we go. Wow, look at that little bit of the rope, how that is so compressed right there. Obviously a rope that, or a knot that takes this much effort to untie, especially with tools like this, they're definitely damaging the rope, is not a good application because this rope is cooked now. I shouldn't be using it for anything. So I would say that the Alpine butterfly is much more difficult to untie after receiving substantial loading. Yeah, look at that. It wasn't a perfect rope when we started, but it's definitely not the perfect rope now. So in conclusion, I would say it is definitely observable that the bowline on a bite is much easier to untie after being severely loaded. Truth of the matter is we probably put more load on that rope than was safe. I'm guessing we were a couple thousand pounds. I, I really have no idea of knowing, but a half inch rope shouldn't see that much weight anyway. Um, Occasionally they do, you know, mistakes happen sometimes. I wouldn't say that makes the butterfly knot a worthless knot. In fact, I, I think the butterfly knot's fantastic. I use it all the time for climbing stuff where it's only got body weight or part of body weight on it. I use it for a lot of canopy anchors, use it for base anchors, use it for all sorts of stuff. But when it comes to choosing a knot that's midline that has to take a heavy duty beating, then I would definitely go with that bowline on a bite. I would say the advantage of the butterfly over the bowline is that it can be loaded in more directions. That definitely has some use. And if you want to load a knot in all three ways, that kind of scenario comes up sometimes, I definitely would avoid the bullet on a bite and would shoot for the Alpine Butterfly. Just knowing that if it gets loaded a lot, it's going to be a chore to untie. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I definitely learned some stuff. Things I kind of already knew, but I learned them way back when, when my 
my experience was low and I probably was maybe not the most observable person in the world when it came to tree work. And so I'm glad that we tested it and saw exactly what happened. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Certainly appreciate it if you leave me a comment. I love talking to you guys in the comment section. And I will hope to see you on the next one.